Why are we tired today, Masters? Because I spent most of the day making candy. I mean, I've made Wrapping candy. presents. Or what? Wrapping presents. Oh. See, I've made candy before. Not a whole lot, like once. But I don't recall it being that exhausting. What were you making for candy? Uh, we made uh, peanut butter balls, uh, chocolate dipped pretzels, and um, peppermint bark. I have to send you my address. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't really have a great place to do that, so I was standing up at my kitchen table or my dining room table because it doesn't really fit. In the so you were just kind of doing this by yourself? Uh, me and my sister. Okay. I was like, I didn't really see you as being, I mean, not no offense, but I didn't really see you as being like, I'm going to make candy today. I make it every year. Really? Yep. How did that start? Um, well, my mother used to make it every year, and then I moved out, and one year she didn't make it, so the next year I made it, and then I've been in charge of making it since. Careful of that. As soon as you do it one time, it becomes your know, job. All right. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. Hmm. Um, yes, sir. And then. I I also I noticed that um you and Ducky are having issues with the mail recently. I also had an issue with the mail. I ordered a Wi-Fi six card with Bluetooth five point one. I have one of those. Um, so that I could start using my wireless headphones wirelessly again because the stupid little dongle I bought has died in less than six months. I also have a stupid little dongle that I never got to use because it just came broken. I'm so I'm I ordered I paid five bucks for it. <laughs> and I ordered one, the right. card. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be here yesterday. Oh. I got a delivery notice. Went to go check it. No card. Amazon. So I um yeah. Mm -hmm. Um USPS delivery. Yep. Um so I put in a hey. Where's my card? Thing. Um. Which last time it happened, um, they sent me, or uh, they found it the next day and brought it to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, we misplaced it. Here it is. Yep. So I know how that goes. That's actually getting... what I'm dealing with right now. Um, I didn't send anything, but I had something that was sent to me, and um, it was supposed to get here on Tuesday. They're now saying that if we don't get it, that if I don't get it by tomorrow at 10 o'clock, then something has clearly gone wrong. And I'm like, if it took you six days <laughs> to figure out something's gone wrong, <laughs> might want to reevaluate your delivery process. I'm giving them till Monday to uh, get back with me on it. Um, and then I'm uh, filing. Uh, that it wasn't ever delivered. Yeah, with that. Well, I mean, I would do that earlier because if they say that it's already been delivered and you don't have it, then that's, something's wrong. That's good. Because if they if they think you've got it, they're not working on it. Well, I sent them a thing. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, I'll. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll have two cards. I mean, keep one for yourself and scalp one on the side. Um, not that that's something that we should be advocating for, but, you know, that's a thing. Good to be done. So, Masters. Huh? I just, I like, I wait, well, I was going to watch it last night, and then the... I realized, oh yeah, it's like, you know, 6 o'clock time for session, and then I was like an hour early, because apparently the session doesn't start until 7 Eastern for uh, Far Reaches. So I didn't uh, watch The Mandalorian yesterday, and then like as the Far Reaches were getting started, I realized that, I found out that one of, um, that there was something happening that if people are particularly curious about, they can go check my Twitter, because that's political, and I was, thoroughly enjoyed myself for three hours. And then I... <laughs> Um, caught up on the far reaches 
um, last week and this week because I'm a masochist and I had nothing better to do and it was kind of loud in my house until like 4 o'clock in the morning not my fault um, live and uh, that, and so I finally didn't, got around to watching The Mandalorian about a half an hour ago so it's fresh Masters yeah, I'm reading one of your memes. Oh. Yeah, okay. Continue. Have you, you watched The Mandalorian? Watched The Mandalorian. Watched it fresh. Yeah, like half hour ago. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you, please tell me you're caught up. I am caught up. That's um, such good news. I'm, I'm sorry that you did not get your prison break. Um, I'm okay with it. Like, I'm totally okay <laughs> with it. Um, I... As soon as they got, you know, Cara Dune involved, now that she's an official marshal, it's kind of a... Eh. There's a certain level of legitimacy to everything they're going to do with her now. Like, they're not just going to go straight on and shoot up a place. Although, I did find this episode to be particularly kind of blind in that regard. Um, okay, so let's get into it. My favorite character of Grogu from season one is back or at least he was back for this episode Mayfeld was just picture perfect and it's not just because like Bill Burr as a comedian otherwise but not just I do but he he just has such a fun character Mayfeld is just he's fun um and now he's he's back he's on the loose that probably means we're going to encounter him again at some point and we got to see a bit of his backstory which I thought was a lot of was, was really cool um so that just made me happy in general. Um, there's a lot of, this is a very character, de- like for as much yes. action as there was, there's a lot of character, lot of development. character development, a lot of it from like, a lot of different characters. I know. And I'm like, where do I start? <laughs> oh, it's so good. This, this is probably now my favorite episode of the season. It happens every episode for me. You know, you're you're just easily amused. Um, <laughs> I am. I mean, when uh, when you can read the expression on the Mandalorian's face when he's not when you can't see his face, mm-hmm. like <laughs> when he uh, uh, he's bait off all the all the pirates and he's laying there on top of it, mm-hmm. and then more come and he looks up and sees them. Mm-hmm. You could just see the dread on his face, like. <sighs> here we go again. <laughs> so that is actually a very interesting point, And one that I was going to bring out when we talked about other things, but since you brought it up, let's talk about this. So Mayfield has a great character building moment where he confronts his old, his old commanding officer. Oh yeah. When, when he sat down and started questioning him, mm-hmm. I was like, that dude's not going to make it out of here alive. Clearly not. Like, <laughs> like as soon as they showed like the hologram of the thing, I'm like, this place is going to explode. I can just feel it in my bones. Hmm. And, some, and sometimes it's okay to have a predictable end because as long as there's a good payoff. And there was a very good payoff. And it wasn't just that it blew up, but like, go, character-driven stuff. So Mayfield reconnects very antagonistically with his former commanding officer, questions him, all kinds of stuff. Makes a lot of very, very broad character judgments against the guy. Like, you know, this is wrong. We shouldn't be killing people. It doesn't say it in so many words, but like in the questions that he asks, it's oh so apparent that he's just like seeping with vitriol for the guy. And then it's not at all a surprise. Also, they did a... Did you catch the subtle nod to this um, episode four cantina scene where it's like he just shoots first, straight up, no questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All true Star Star Wars fans know Han shot first, and so did Mayfield. It's great. Oh, beautiful. I loved it. Um, anyway, so he was making all these very, very broad condemnations of imperial tactics and imperial things and this that and the other okay 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 totally on board with that fine how did they end up getting into the imperial facility in the first place 
What do you mean? So they go to the planet. They take out two Imperials. Okay, the Imperials are the bad people, right? Mm-hmm. They drive the little town with all the locals there. Yep. They uh, drive a little bit farther on. They see the other two transports blow up. Uh-huh. Great tension building. Like, what's going on? Is this just like a rough patch of road? What's, oh, it's pirates. Okay. Where did the pirates come from? Could those perhaps be also some of the locals? Hmm? Probably. Because they're not actually trying to steal the shipment. They're trying to blow it up. Mm-hmm. So they're not trying to enrich themselves. They're trying to tell the Empire, get out. Yeah. So, in order to infiltrate the Imperial thing, what did the Mandalorian and, and, and Mayfield have to do? Well, a lot. Just basically just... It was exclusively Din Djarin for the whole entire thing. He's like, I am going to kill a whole bunch of people. Sure. They think that this is an Imperial transport, and they think that I'm an Imperial, and they're totally innocent from everything else, but... I have a mission, so I'm just going to go ahead and end their lives in mass. Mm-hmm. And then we have this very kind of self-righteous speech about, oh, it's wrong to kill innocent civilians and bystanders and people who are just defending their own homes. Wait a second. And I'm, I'm just, I, like, I, I really appreciated this little set, touch of irony. I don't, I don't even think that they intended to do it. But if they like, I, I, I think that the, the whole like run in was supposed to be just a action set piece, which is a great action set piece. But when you actually think about the ramifications of what they did to get there, it's like you guys are passing judgment for doing the exact same thing you just did to get here. And I, I, I appreciate that, even though they were probably totally tone deaf to that being the case. Um, I thought that was beautiful. As I'm a twisted person like. Is that fair? Yes, you are a twisted person. That's good. There we go. Um, so they this great moment, and then and and then we had a little bit of interaction with Fett and uh and Fennec Shion. Oh my! Hey, and how about the the touch up on his armor? Uh did you notice that detail? I noticed that detail right off. You didn't. You didn't like it, did you? I am okay with it. I kind of wish that they had done something else. Because it now his armor right now looks like your standard, um, like matte finish car wrap. If 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 you're familiar with like wrapping cars and stuff, mm-hmm. um, let me throw a picture of that in the Discord. Um, but um, yeah, it's just like ah, uh, I I I'm I'm okay with it. Like it looks it looks good. It looks like a, a great. It looks like a very good update, but at the same time, it's like, man, I wish they had done almost more of a throwback kind of design, as opposed to like this very modern matte finish kind of thing that we're seeing everywhere now. Um, like I said, it doesn't look bad. It just looks. It almost looks too Earth-like. Is that fair? Sure. Um, you're, you're, you're giving in way too easy on this one, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, 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 I wish they had done something a little bit more spacey, I guess, but there's nothing wrong with it. It looks, it looks good. It looks like, please define for me spacey. Um, well, right now his armor is like the, mo- aside from the obvious ding in the forehead, like his armor is now the most untouched thing in the galaxy. It looks it looks like the most pristine, untouched, um, just perfect thing that you're ever gonna find. Like even his ship is a little bit, uh, you know, banged up. I don't necessarily say they have to have it banged up, but I mean more, uh, make him match the color scheme of his ship a little bit better. Does that make, uh, like, so, like, that was how, how he was originally done. Um, like, his armor and his ship, they match. Um, or at least they match the current, uh, current paint job. The original one is, is much different. 
but um there we go that's the original paint job for the slave one um or at least the current paint job so it's like it like i said you don't have to have all the dings and stuff but i, I wish they'd got maybe a little bit more red in there um i wish it was a little bit maybe a little bit more glossy as opposed to just like the very very flat matte finish on it but i mean like i said it looks good it's fine i'm i have no issues with it um i know it may sound like i do but i i really don't have any issues with it it's, it's beautiful um yeah oh that's a very dark picture well it's from it's a screen sh There we go. Yeah. So like this is his initial armor. I mean, uh, this is from the Mandalorian also, but I mean like you can see how like his armor matches his ship. Um and like the new finish on it is almost a little too perfect. Like it's the same color scheme, but it just seems like a totally different kind of paint. So, like I said, nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's going to take some getting used to. They're now quiet again. I'm grabbing a cap. You're what to who to what? Grabbing another screen cap. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it, it looks... It just looks too pristine for the rest of Star Wars. Star Wars has kind of a grittier look to it. That's because he just freshly painted it. I know. Yeah. But. He wanted to match up with Mando there with his pristine new armor. That was such a great moment, too. Like, when uh, Mayfield is, like, coming out of the prison scrapyard and he, like, stops short and he's like, oh. I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> and then it's like, hey there. <laughs> He's like, oh crap. Like, whatever is about to happen is not going to go well for me. That was just <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> uh. So yeah, Mayfield, great character development. Cara Dune, eh, she didn't really have that much to do, but she she did. Everything that she did was serviceable. I mean, I, I, again, excellent. She did exactly what she needed to. There's not really anything more to say. She didn't mess. <laughs> Every, everything you could say as an additive to that makes it sound bad. So I'm going to stop because it's, it's not. It was, it was perfect. Um, not, um, not everybody has to be the, be the main character in every episode. So what do you think about except Mendo? What do you think about um, Mando fighting on top of the transport and forgetting that he's not wearing his Mandalorian armor? I thought that was a great way of... Oh, I gotta find this too. Um, I thought that was a great way of illustrating his... Dependency? Um, not just his dependency on it, but the difference between Mandalorian and non-Mandalorian armor. Yeah. Um... I had only one issue with it, and there's another guy, there's a guy on YouTube that I follow who did a much better job of breaking it down than I'm even going to try to do. Um, so I'm not basically going to try. I'm just going to find his video and I'm going to post it in. Um, I appreciate that. But it is just... My thing is, when he gets up and he like pulls his blaster and he fires like two shots, two, three shots, and then like I don't know if it jams, if it runs out of ammunition. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, like, I kind of would like to have more explanation for that, for what we saw. Um, I would like to have a lot more explanation for that because it feels like that was almost kind of a cheap throwaway move just so that he would be unarmed and have to fight them hand to hand. But... I can't really fault it for that because the choreography of the fight on top of the thing with hand to hand combat was absolutely pitch perfect. Like I know I've, I, I know a couple weeks ago I was ragging on the Ahsoka lightsaber fight against the Mandalorian staff or Mandalorian spear. 
or the Beskar spear. But like they stepped up their game. This was like there wasn't really any major like real world flaws to the fight. It was very, very well done. It was fast moving. It was well shot. It wasn't a bunch of like close up jump cuts and shaky cam. It was panned back far enough you could actually see what was going on. And all the movements pretty much made sense. Like, yeah, if you were in that situation faced with that particular person and you had the skills and stuff necessary to do what you're about to do, that is exactly what you would have done in that particular situation. And it just it really, really worked for me. Um I th- so it's like I I'm kind of I, I I will uh defer to Shadowversity and his excellent breakdown on some things that probably need to be explained a little bit better. Why the bull why why the blaster stopped working, it needs to be explained, I think. But in terms of that moment and that sequence of events, I can't fault it because it's really, really, really the execution from that point was near perfect. I really enjoyed that. Um that I yeah, I thought that was great. Cool. Was that not what you were expecting to hear? No. That's good. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Um I they did kind of set us up like right at the beginning where uh or towards the beginning where spoiler alert, Dindajaran takes his helmet off in front of people. Well, then, this whole episode is spoiler alert. What are you talking about? I know, but I mean but then but I mean, like, extra extra levels of spoiler, I guess. But at the same time, does it really count if he killed all those people? <laughs> it's 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 well, a... he didn't kill he didn't kill one of them. Right, right. But uh, let me find this. Uh, um, I forget what I saw. Oh, so my favorite part was at the very end. Well, not the very end, but the end um, when uh, they're sitting there and, and he's like, take me away. And they're like, you know, it was a real shame that he didn't make it off of the planet. And he's sitting there going. Crap, they're going to kill me. I know. And I'm like, this is the this is the exact same language is always used when they're about to just off somebody who's now an inconvenience. Yes. Oh, where is it? Uh, um, there we go. Here we go. This is not quite the more meme format I was looking at, looking for, but it works. Nobody will notice if there's nobody to notice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's like, why? Yeah, Mayfield is out there and he now knows what Dindajaran looks like under the helmet. I don't really think that matters that much because when is he ever out of the helmet? Um, yeah, all, and also, um, he's soon to be everybody will know what he looks like, hopefully. I, I think that's the goal. So, to eventually take the helmet off full time, yeah, well, not full time, but. I mean, just um, on and off as as is. Yeah, I think that's also probably the case. I think that is part of his character arc to yeah. kind of break because he is part of the Death Watch, um, break off, which is a very. I mean, like that's that's kind of a bad thing for those of you who have seen the uh, the Clone Wars. Those of you who haven't, you should. Um, but with that being with him being part of a kind of a subset of less than savory Mandalorian culture, um, it kind of makes a lot of sense that they would try to um, break him out of that from a narrative standpoint beyond just what's going on in this particular series, but as a part of the larger world building. So Mm -hmm. I, I think that is definitely where they're going to head. And I think that as things progress, maybe in season four or five, he'll end up rejoining bo Katan and helping retake Mandalore. I know that, that uh, Mayfield said that Mandalore is, Mandalore is gone, but I think that's an, a gross exaggeration no matter how you yeah. slice it. Yeah, it's probably just a the spirit of Mandalore is gone, not the actual planet. Right. 
Um, although there would be some Legends canon, which would suggest that the planet, while still there, was sterilized. Um, bas- basically, what they do, what the Empire did in in Legends was, I think they, I know they did this to a couple different planets. I don't remember if Mandalore was directly one of them. It's been a while since I read that book. Um, but what they did was they parked a bunch of star destroyers over top of the planet and just rained down turbo laser fire until the entire surface of the planet was yeah, just like ash. Yeah, yeah. We just we just burned off the surface and everything that was living there. Um, but uh, it's 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 it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Um, let's see. Had had kind of character development. Um, I loved the message that he sent to Moff Gideon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he just quoted him back his own words. Did you catch that? Um, I don't remember the speech. Uh, I just remember it happening. So. It's not um, as fresh in my mind as it is in yours. Well, not even just, not even, I mean, like, as soon as he started saying it, I'm like, oh, I recognize this. Um, uh, actually, I think it would be episode seven, I think. It um, is episode seven, yeah. Chapter 15. No, no, I'm no. Got it pulled up. Not, me. not, well, I mean, not just that one. Um, on IMDb, I'm pulling this up because it should have some quotes, which I believe this is where Moff Gideon first shows up. Do 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 do. See, see here. What's that? Mo- Moff Gideon. I'm gonna quote it. Uh, you have something I want. You may think that you have some idea of what you are in possession of but you do not. Soon he will be back with me. He means more to me than you will ever know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the exact same words that Moff Gideon said to him when they were in the bar on um, Navarro. Trying to find it here. The quotes from episode seven, maybe it's episode eight. Oh, it's the last episode. Episode yeah. eight, okay. Um, well then, let's just find only one more episode. I know, one more episode this season. I'm like, darn coming, I want more. <laughs> They're doing a lot of short seasons for a lot of their shows. Yeah. Um, that was another big thing that happened this week. All the uh Oh yeah, all the announcements. Yeah. Ten Star Wars shows. I'm still most excited for the Bad Batch. I think that that is going to turn into a... I mean, it already kind of is, but I can see that definitely turning into a much more um mature Is that gonna be is that going to be a live action? No, it's I haven't actually looked at the notes. It's animated. Okay. Um It is how do I, you just So it's it's animated. It's basically a continuation on from uh the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. But it's following Fives after, you know, he's back out and he's got like the weird robot hand and everything. Um and his connection up with the bad batch of clones, the ones who didn't quite come out right, but have like yeah. special, special things about them. Yeah. And that to me is incredibly exciting because that was the most underutilized part of all of season seven. And I'm like, man, I wish we could have more time with these guys. And now we get like a full separate series and the trailer for it looked amazing. I don't watch. Tra- well, I did. I, I couldn't help myself. I wanted I wanted to know when it was coming out. I, I accidentally watched the uh, Loki trailer. 
I don't feel like the Loki trailer really told us anything. It which, really didn't. Which I'm very thankful for because yes. there have been way too many movies recently that I've been like that I've watched or I've seen the trailers for, and I'm like, I don't have to see the movie. Or I fortunately saw the trailer after I saw the movie, and I'm like, this is a terrible trailer, because after you see the trailer, you don't have to watch the movie. Like, every single story beat is hidden in the stupid trailer. And not really even hidden, it's right on display. That's right, it's on the trailer. It's like, stupid people. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of not knowing what I'm getting into. Um, Same. Bad Batch looks like it's going to be a dramatic, real ride adventure, and then it's also set against the transition from the new republic from the old republic into the empire with a lot of intrigue and order 66 things going back and forth Mm -hmm. um i think we're going to i mean this is total speculation i think we're going to see that the bad batch part of them being the bad batch is that they don't have the the uh biological chips in their head Mm -hmm. um but they're still really useful so they keep them around and then well, fives is all messed is up it, now. No, because isn't some of the the people in the Bad Batch aren't they in, um, uh, uh, um, the other one? Rebels. Rebels. No. Are you sure? Pretty sure. I think at least one of them. I don't think so. Uh, His fives and rebels. Mm, doesn't look like it. Let's see. Appearances. Yeah, he is not in rebels. And if, and if and if any of them were going to be in rebels, it would be fives. Uh, who are these three? Gee, leave me alone, USA Today. Goodness, I hate, 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 hate. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. Sorry, um. Let's see here. Um, Rex. Rex obviously. is. Rex, I think, was, but Rex is the one who went out with Ahsoka. I, I'm, and he's not I'm part a, of the bad Okay, 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 okay. Let's see, I'm trying to see the other two names. Um, these are the three I'm talking about. The one on the right is who I'm thinking is uh, like the leader of the Bad Batch. That's not him. The leader of the Bad Batch has a gigantic face tattoo. Let me find let me find pictures. Do-do-do. There we go. Uh if I can take a think. Right. Here, here's the bad. Yeah, that's not him. The is leader, the guy on the far right, though. Guy on the far right. No, because the eye is on the wrong side. And he's and he's way too tall. And it's not the sniper, and it's not the the tech guy either. Um, so yeah, I don't think the ba- bad batch is not in rebels. What are their names, though? Um, let me see. Would that be? What would the name of this episode be? Relics, I think? Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to be so amazed if that is the correct word. <laughs> um, uh-huh. Let's see. Rebels. I think they were in season two. Yeah, season two, definitely. Return of the Clones. The Lost Commanders. And, re- and the second one where they're in is Relics of the Old Republic. <laughs> uh. What are their names? Uh, well, one is Captain Rex, obviously. Obviously. 
Um, you full cast here. Oh, that's very helpful. Clone troopers. That's uh, not Gregor. One. Gregor okay. and Wolfie. Wolfie, All right. And then the Bad Batch names are Rex, Cody. Uh, nope. Those are those are not in yep. Bad Batch. But... Yep, you're right. I was just reading the names that it presented me with. Um. Uh, Wrecker. Wrecker. He's the big Crosshair, guy. Crosshair. Tech. Mm -hmm. Gunship. Mm -hmm. And Sergeant Hunter. Okay. I'm now satisfied with your answer. Aha. You cannot defeat my knowledge of the Starverse. <clears throat> Except for I didn't know their names either. Um, as much as that pains me to say. But I will. Believe me. Uh... <laughs> Ow. All right. So, yeah, just lots of like, I saw the 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 trailer for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't know where they're going with that yet. Um, really, they're talking about replacing Captain America, but the trailer doesn't really say anything about how they're going to try and do that. So, they basically make it sound like Sam doesn't want to do it, but he's probably going to be doing it anyway. So. There we go. Um, it has kind of a reluctant, but got a reluctant buddy cop kind of feel. Um, oh, that is one thing we should talk about. Sebastian Stan. There is a lot of not really evidence, but talk rumors that they're going to try and cast him as young Luke Skywalker. Are you still there? Uh-huh. I'm trying to process that. Let me get the images here. Yeah, I've got a picture. So this is a, this is a photo manipulation, but it does the job pretty well. Why? Um, because Mark Hamill's almost 70. Or he is 70, one of those two? Yes, I, I got that. Thank okay. you. I mean, there's only so many more flips he can do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe. I think they'd have, the first thing they'd have to do is they'd have to give him the non episode, like the non original trilogy hair. They have to update his hair somehow because that doesn't really work in every shot. Some of them do. Like, I could see, like, this version. This looks a lot better. Um, or, yeah, something like this. Okay, he doesn't look anything like Mark in that picture. I think he does. I mean, he, he looks passable. He looks close enough. Um, am I saying it's perfect? No. But if it was perfect... I mean, you can't get perfect. No. Nobody looks like Mark Hamill. Um, I th even even his closest uh, doppelganger wouldn't look exactly like Mark Hamill. Right. I think that it's evocative enough of the overall face structure of Mark Hamill. Um, so this one, he's not done up to be like like him, and you can see a lot of very close similarities between just like how their face is made up. The nose is different. The eyes are a little bit uh, lower. He's got a little bit more forehead kind of thing, but. For the most part, it's pretty close. It's closer than Alden Ehrenreich and Harrison Ford. And I love Solo, so... That's... Um, I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. Tell me, whoever's playing Mark... Or whoever's playing uh, Luke Skywalker, just tell me that that guy's Luke Skywalker now. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Um... The difficulty he might have is with, like, the voice, because he does kind of have a, a grittier voice than Sebastian Stan is noted for. Um, but, you know, he's an actor. He can get a voice coach. But they could hide. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I 
I think I, I think that could work. Um, I, I'd be okay with it. There's not, I mean, not that they're gonna, not that they're gonna ask my opinion about anything. Clearly, creating a movie without a script. What's wrong? Um, do it every day. So, um, I don't know if you've done it yet, but I watched Mulan this week. I have not watched Mulan. It is hot garbage. That's why I haven't watched Mulan. <laughs> Please is. explain. Validate I my mean, life choices. So, um, it completely disregards um, the original movie. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of callbacks to it, but very, very few. And like, in in uh, there was no singing. No, no. <laughs> um, which I'm not entirely upset about. Um, but like, um, like they start out with her. Uh, they talk about chi. Yeah. How she has chi, which makes her a good warrior. And she uh, has chi from a young age. And her father teaches her how to uh, harness her chi mm -hmm. and become a, a brilliant warrior. Uh, but then her mother is not happy about it because uh, a woman's place is in the kitchen. Right. Um, and so her father tells her to hide her chi um, uh, so that she doesn't disgrace the family. Mm hmm. Um, and then the whole Mulan thing happens where, uh, he gets called into service and she takes his place. Um, and then like, uh, which this part was a little bit more realistic. She slept in the same cabin, uh, as the, the rest of the troops instead of, you know, off on her own. Right. Um, which made a little bit more sense, but, um, and then the, the way she got out of, you know, taking showers with everybody is that she just took guard duty every night, uh, while they were in the showers. Gotcha. Um, but I could definitely feel the Chinese government's hand in this film. Oh yeah. Like, okay. So <laughs> that is why they disregarded the original anim animated film because it ticked off the Chinese. Yeah. Like they were not happy with it. If you go, I was in Shanghai Disney and I'm talking with, you know, my friend who's there. And I'm like, oh, look at all these. And, like, and they have, like, this big show um, that, we st that we stuck around for. And I'm just, like, waiting for Mulan to show up because they have, <laughs> they had Chinese Merida and Chinese Cinderella and Chinese Snow White. And I'm like, man, when is, like, actually Chinese Mulan going to show up? And, like, oh, you won't see her. Why? <laughs> and I'm like... I mean, I'm I'm pretty stupid, but come on, give me some reasons here. And they're like, well, it's because the Chinese don't like don't like the Disney portrayal of Mulan, and they find it offensive to their culture and to this you know classic story. And I'm like, okay, I can kind of understand that, but like, okay, I mean, still a good movie. Come on, people. Um, <laughs> apparently, that's not allowed. Nothing's allowed in China. Ha! Anyway, uh, so. <laughs> that was uh, interesting, but yeah, that's why they, when they updated the film, they basically just made a whole new film, and they still missed their mark because it still ticked off the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was it was pretty horrible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was just it was hot garbage. That's all I gotta say about it. I I've seen a couple reviews. Um, I know I mentioned him like. This is like going on like what six weeks in a row. Shadowversity, he does a breakdown of the film, and I saw his breakdown of it, and I'm like, I don't have to see any more of the film. I, I don't. All the main story beats are covered here. None of the visuals that I'm seeing are particularly like, oh, I must see this for myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And the like, um, the fighting choreography. Yeah. Imagine the worst Japanese uh, movie you can think of, you know. Dis disassociated mouth with the words and everything. Uh -huh. Well, they didn't. That wasn't part of it. But like the like almost Bollywood levels of improbable fighting techniques. Oh yeah, like so one of the one of the things that Shad does. I'm gonna post that video too. Uh, one of the things that Shad breaks down is like they have trebuchet and they're trying to hit a single girl. With yeah. a trebuchet. 
Yeah. This is probably and not number one the best use of your of your artillery pieces. Also, by the time you've got it recentered on one girl, she's gone. Like somewhere well, they else. Didn't, <laughs> well, the the thing there is they didn't know it was just her, supposedly. Because she set up helmets to make them think that it was a bunch of people. Yeah, but that I mean, yeah, it, he doesn't. It was better, still dumb. He doesn't. I'm breakdown. not trying to. De- I'm not trying to defend the film. It he was. Does, it was does, super bad. He does a much better breakdown. Um, and, and like he he goes into the because he actually is someone who has studied uh, historical battlefield tactics and things like that. And so he's like, yeah. So here's what you would actually do in that situation, and here's why this is the most stupid thing you've ever seen in your life. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's. That that makes sense. I'm I'm on board with that. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So don't waste your time. I watch. I, I watch. I, I watch this stuff. I too. did it for you. Thank you for throwing yourself on that. For yeah. Well, I was I was hoping it was going to be better than I've heard about. It was not. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but hey, it was a good way to waste a couple of hours in my day. Uh there's there is well i won't say a good way but <laughs> there is one of the remake movies that i haven't seen that i am told that i should see which is uh i think it's the 2015 version of cinderella i haven't seen that one i haven't seen it either but i've heard that it is surprisingly good like better than the critics said it was and i'm like Maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've heard enough like under the weather stuff that like maybe it is worth, um, worth checking into. Um, like, not really. Uh, it's got a, it's got a nice cast going for it. It's got uh, Kate Blanchett as the stepmother. Um. Helena Bonham Carter is the fairy godmother. That seems kind of weird, but okay. Stellan Wait. Scar. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I went on Twitter. Apparently, Talison Jaffe is reprising his role as Kenny Butler in Spider-Man Three. No, this is a meme. Okay. This is a meme. So, as Spider-Man Three starts to because. <laughs> starts to uh take shape there are more there were there were like four or five big drops of people who are going to be in spider-man 3 like andrew garfield and toby mcguire and this guy and that guy and the other guy and it's like well because there's a t- there's talk that's going to be like a, a spider-verse kind of crossover where there's going to be a bunch of different spider-men and they're all now canon and this is all facilitated by dr strange and so he's going to be okay. in there and this guy's going to be there okay and as this went on more and more people just keep making up jokes like, oh yeah, and so-and-so is going to be in there and so-and-so is going to be in there. And and it's like, really, Disney is Disney and Sony are treading on thin ice over Spider-Man 3 because we have yet to have a good Spider-Man 3. And we really need to have a good Spider-Man 3. And the more, the big problem that we've had with every Spider-Man 3 up to this point has been they keep trying to overload it with too many things. So, unpopular opinion. Yes. I don't think we've had a good Spider-Man 1 or 2 since the originals. That is an unpopular I, I, opinion. I I do not like Tom Holland's uh, Spider-Man. Really? I don't. I really don't. Why do you not like Tom Holland's Spider-Man? I just, I hated both of the movies. They're super low on my, the second one was better than the first. But they are super low on my uh, list of MCU movies. Hmm. That is very strange. No, it's not Doctor Strange. Because, I mean, like, so I like the Tom Holland Spider Man movies. I wish that we were getting more. I wish we'd gotten more of a payoff with the Vulture. Like, he had come back at some point. I mean, that's not totally out. That's not off the table yet because he's still alive. But I wish we'd have gotten more from that but aside from that I, th- I thought they've been very serviceable and like way better than some other marvel films we've had like way better than some other marvel films we've had um i'm just kind of nervous about them adding all these new people 
into Spider-Man 3 and then being like, oh yeah, it's totally not going to be the same movie as it was last time. Ha ha, ha No Topher Grace isn't in this one, why do you ask? <laughs> it's a joke. Um, uh, and actually, this, this is an, un, an unpopular opinion, I'm sure. I never really liked Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. I mean, I, I, I can, I can understand that. I mean, I don't, I don't like Spider-Man in general. Okay. So this is, but I think, you have some I think predisposed bias against Spider-Man and that, and therefore this is deranking the films in your mind just because you don't like Spider-Man. Maybe. Um, but I, I, I like Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, um, out of all of the ones that we've gotten. So Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire is one of the best superhero films of all time. And I will objectively stand, sit here and say that at the same time that I say I don't particularly care for Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Or in a lot of other things. He's just not my kind of actor. He just seems to not have a lot of stage presence as it were. Which might be what got him the role in the first place because Spider-Man is supposed to be kind of a nerd. But he doesn't really... There's nothing that really draws me to his performance. Um, and I think they could have done a lot of different things with um, Kirsten Dunst as, as Mary Jane or gotten somebody else to play Mary Jane. She doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really carry that franchise a lot either. Um, the best parts about uh, the original Spider-Man are the villains. Just straight up. So I, th- I think my main issue... Uh, with Tom Holland's Spider-Man mm-hmm. is that he is a modern day Spider-Man. Okay. Um, having a whiny teenager kid play Spider-Man is really annoying. It's kind of it's been. Just, well, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, it's like having Foxy play Spider-Man, basically. Would you want that? Some would say that that would be a very accurate casting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not saying that if that's what I want. I'm just saying that there are those who would make that argument that it should be kind of a, you know... Uh, Foxy doesn't watch these, right? No. <laughs> okay, kind of a socially inept teenager who doesn't really know his way around anything and just trying to find his way in the world that kind of does perfectly fit the mold for Spider-Man. That's why Spider-Man is so popular because when mar- comics were still being marketed to kids, they're not really doing done that now, but when they were still being marketed to kids, Spider-Man was a very relatable character because he's going through all the same crap they are. And like, especially the ones who are like outcasts and down and outs because, Hey, nobody likes Peter Parker, but everybody likes Spider-Man. It gave them a, a great chance for escapism to be like, well, ma- I mean, kind of dangerous thought process on this one, but like, you know, maybe something will happen where I will be able to ascend beyond the place where I am right now to a better place, i.e., you know, Spider-Man. Yeah. It's very pointed escapism, um, but it worked, and that's why Spider-Man is, is still Marvel's most popular property. Um, by a lot. But, uh, that doesn't mean that all iterations of him have been gems. I think Tom Holland is doing a great job. I, I mean, this is, this is kind of a contentious point at this stage in the game, but no one really cares and it doesn't matter, but I kind of wish they'd have found some sort of, you know, American actor to play him because he's like an all-American like Captain America, if Captain America was played by somebody from Australia, we might all have an issue with that because he's Captain America. But I mean, um, I don't, I don't have that big of an issue with other heroes, but like Captain America and Spider-Man are like, Hey, yeah, they're both from New York city. They're, they both got a lot of ties here to the good old US of A and we got a Brit playing, playing Spider-Man. I'm not saying that Tom Holland's doing a bad job. I like his performance. I think that he's very doing a great job. I just like, man, I kind of wish he'd been born on this side of the pond. Um, <laughs> although it is funny when in interviews and stuff, he, after getting his American accent down, he's had some difficulty going back to his Londoner vernacular. 
And uh, some of his interviews are hilarious because he'll just start talking with an American accent and he'll get reminded like halfway through, aren't you from London? Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of an important thing to remember. Your mom may have something to say about that. <laughs> oh, man. But yes, I, I, I think uh, I, I, I like the Spider-Man films. Are they my favorites? No. Um, I did definitely think the second one was better than the first one. I'm very uh, trepidatious, curious about what they're going to do with the third one. Because I'm trepidatious beyond all reason because they keep adding people to it. I'm trepidatious beyond all reason because they just released a secret identity at the end of the last one. I'm trepidatious beyond all reason because a lot of things. But if they can somehow pull it off and not give us a bad Spider-Man 3, so that would be a major step forward. <laughs> what do you think? How do you think they're... Um, how would you feel if they walked that back at the, end, at the uh, beginning of this next film? If they walked back his being a part... His face reveal. I'd be very upset. Like if they, at the very beginning of it, um, they, they everything was about all the discreditation of, of the video and how that kid can't possibly be Spider-Man and nobody believes the report. Okay. If it's an in Canon thing where they're like, okay, this is clearly fake. Okay. We can do, we can talk about that. But if it's like, Oh, we just decided that, we as the studio made a mistake and now we're just going to pretend like that never happened, I'd have an issue with that. If there's an in-canon, in-world explanation that can make it happen and it works, I'd be okay. But, um, yeah. If they're just like, oh no, it, we totally didn't just give away the whole farm and create uh, Alex Jones type character for, um, what's his name? Uh, or basically turn J. Jonah Jameson into an Alex Jones type character, uh, conspiracy theorist. Um, if, I thought if, you liked Alex Jones. I do like Alex Jones. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Uh, yeah, that's actually why I was up so late last night because he was on a podcast. Yeah, I know. I saw, and I'm like, oh, this is the greatest thing on earth. I was so happy. Still am. They, it's just good television. It's just good television. Um, I don't understand 80% of the stuff that he says because I'm pretty sure most of it is because of some sort of drug or something that he's on, but it is so entertaining to watch him do it. Um, I just, I, I can't, I can't watch dumpster fires. <laughs> that's not the kind of uh, entertainment I look forward I to. I kind of want to make a paladin. That's Alex Jones. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> like, and it would have to be a paladin too. Someone who's like way overzealous about something and just con convinced that the rest of the world is out to get them. Like, like some sort of like lesser God or deity. And he's like, no, you don't understand. They're really the greatest thing of all, of all time. And everything else is just kind of best of them. Guess them. It's like, oh my word, this, this would be, this has to be a thing at some point. Um, I'm begging you for a one shot or something. <laughs> oh, oh, the, the, this is my serious voice. Please, <laughs> please don't. You don't think Alex Jones as a paladin would be fun? No. Oh, I think that'd be so great. I don't think Alex Jones as a human is fun. So <laughs> I'll have to do this for Friendly's campaign or something. <laughs> oh, I'll turn one of his one of his NPCs into Alex Jones. <laughs> I hate that, that thought even crossed your mind. Because <laughs> you know, now that it's in there, it's going to come out yeah, eventually. <laughs> yes, exactly. That is, yes. Oh lord. I mean, so that was that was the thing that happened on Thursday. Um, friendly did an off night campaign. Yeah, I know he invited me to it. Yeah, it was pretty good. I was not there. Um, but. Uh, I, he I think asked, broke, but played in it. Yep. He asked yeah, she me, she played, uh, diazepam. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So he asked me if I will 
uh, records some stuff because he knows that I have conflict schedules on uh, uh, scheduling conflicts on Thursdays, and I can't make it to his his time slot. And he wanted me to play the captain NPC. I'm like, okay. So I threw together like a, uh, eleven or twelve recordings and just threw them at him. One was like an introduction to the campaign. The other one was um, this drunken captain um, giving them their first mission, and the rest of them were just like random things that came to my mind. And it just, like, I could not have picked better things to say if I had tried. Uh, so he comes up and he, you know, tells them everyone they got their ship and everyone just kind of figure out, you know, what position you're going to be on the ship because he's drunk and he doesn't care and he's just going to go do his own thing. And um, one of the characters comes up to his door and knocks on it and be like, hey, Captain, so what's your heading? Where are we going? And not knowing that that was going to happen, I recorded one that I'd marked like through the door where I turned up the bass, turned down the treble and then uh, cranked down the volume a little bit. So it sounded like he was talking through a door and it was just like, I don't know where we're going. I don't understand one marking on this map. And just, it was, it was, it was perfect. I was so happy. Um, it was, it was beautiful. It still is. I am very sad that it was not recorded um, because I wish I'd have been able to hear that reaction to have just the perfect response to that situation. And that happened like twice more on during the course of those events. And so there's a couple of uh, recordings that haven't been done, haven't been used yet. And there's a couple more I can still throw in. Um, he's still doing his spookers campaign, but this is like, if everybody can't be there, they're going to do this instead because it's very, just drop in, drop out friendly. Um, ah, it's friendly. Um, but, um, so, yeah. so Speaking of D and D, yeah. Um, have you got your character nailed down for Tuesday? Um, I'm using him exactly as he is. Well, I don't know how he is. Um, broken and overpowered. <laughs> broken and overpowered. <laughs> oh my goodness! And Mumble that... still doesn't realize how badly this is broken yet, but he will soon. <laughs> Uh, have you got your uh, your backstory all figured out and everything? Oh, that's what you're talking about. No, yeah. I haven't done that at all. Are you afraid of making backstories? Have I traumatized you? That's tomorrow's project. Okay. Um, I am. Preaching. What are you going to do about tomorrow's campaign? Um, we're supposed to be getting a document dropped tonight sometime. <laughs> you think that's actually going to happen? Nope. Um, I said I used the word "supposed to be." I will, I still actually do need to reach out to, to Pixel and be like, hey, I want to be Master's pet. Um, <laughs> I'm totally on board for that. And, and uh, just kind of go from there. Because I really like I, the idea of doing a, um, of bringing back Barkham, but making him like a Mark, like Hamill's, a subs- Mark Hamill's Joker meets Gollum. Gollum. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That could be hilarious. Oh, goodness. The amount of improv that you're going to make me do. <laughs> Just from, I'll say one simple thing and then you'll have a retort. Then I'll have to retort to your retort and then you'll say something else and then. <laughs> Masu, what's the problem? I just want to eat his toes. Maybe on the next one. This is not the time. Promise? I make no promises. You know that. Master's so greedy. He eats all the toes himself. Yes, yes, I eat all the toes. Let's move on. This just took a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I do need to reach out to him about that and be like, hey, so I want to play a bugbear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, so, don't have Tuesdays. So, Tuesday, me and Monkey are sharing a backstory. Mm-hmm. And we <clears throat> decided to make our own town where we are from instead of starting off in one of the three major cities. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, we've been working on, or as Monkey would say, I've been working on, um, referring to me, not himself. Um, the backstory of our uh, town that we're from. Right. And that's been a lot of fun. 
uh, just coming up with the lore for that to give to Mumbles to play with. So, um, what was it, Thursday? Wednesday or Thursday, I forget which one. Um, Ducky and Mumbles and I got together, and Ducky and I are going to share a backstory, more or less. Okay. She is a, a Leonin, and uh, uh-huh. he has been tasked with collecting the heirlooms from her tribe. Her pride, okay. whatever it is. I... It's spoilers, but okay. Yeah, you, know, you know, you're going to find this all you're, out on Tuesday. You're good anyway. at that. Yeah. No. But oh it, yeah, because she's going to give us our backstory as soon as she introduces her character. Exactly. Um, it's okay. I've gotten my grief out. I've killed her once already. Technically, monkey did, but I helped. Say, I am obviously playing a drunk. Ba- mm-hmm. Basically, basically, I mean, not not giving away any deeper. Like, so it's me. I'm going to have my surface backstory, which Ducky knows about. And then I'm going to have my actual backstory, which will be a lot more involved and dark and traumatic. And it's, it's me. I'll figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I prom. Oh, I was going to say I promise no cannibalism, but I'll, I'll wait till I write it to make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Kind of shocking how how frequently that comes up in my backstories, actually. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically, the, the the surface one that she's going to tell you about is that uh, I, as a drunken pirate, was inland for some reason and came to her village and stole um, something very important from them, and then I wandered off with it drunkenly, sold it drunkenly, and then drank all the profits from it. And by which point she tracked me down and asked me where I sold it, which I was too blackout drunk to remember. So yeah, fun. And, and so now, so now you're indebted to Ducky. Well, now she's keeping me around in the hopes that eventually I will have some sort of spark of memory and remember who I sold it to. We can go get it. But it's been a while. Fun. I don't know why, but I've been ha- like I've been having like a string of characters, not just mine, last like two months that are inebriates. Drunks. Inebriates, yes. Yeah, because uh, um, it has become my life goal to make uh Brookbutt's character no longer uh an alcoholic. <sighs> it's gonna be a long journey. I know how to fix that. I practice do tell. I I say I made the character, so I know how to fix her oh, well, alcoholism. True. So <laughs> Sorry, broke, but I know how to I mean I didn't make he, it, he knows I, your kryptonite. I didn't make all of it, but I know most of it. Now so I know how to fix I know how to fix it. Um I also know that it's going to be a long time coming because I've also talked to Mumbles about that. So <laughs> you might want to oh, get like used it. to, to drunk. Um, yeah, well, the work has made it his personal um, mission. Well, that's good. So that that, that I think that there she, should be oh, little she, subplots. She messaged me uh, after the game uh, Friday and said, uh, "I think it would be really fun to pull out uh, pull out this fun little buddy thing with our characters. Uh, it would be sort of a love hate relationship where Wallace Shawn." From Wall of Sean's perspective, he really loves you, but he won't admit it. And I said, "It's cute how you uh, how you finally caught up to what I was doing." Anyways, mm. <laughs> it's like I'm not giving you the choice. <laughs> well, it was what was it? Um, by the way, Friday was amazing. I thought that was hilarious. Um, uh, I particularly what part? Liked it. I particularly liked the part where, um, you forced. An owl bear, or no, it ended up being like some sort of weird cow into Mumble's campaign where he was like specific, there is no, no there's nothing here. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're like, no, there definitely that, is. That wasn't me. That was uh that was uh a uh, uh, monkey. But I originally brought it up. But then the two of you went back and forth in like this deep southern back and forth, and it was amazing. 
Uh, that was me and uh, Dark Moon. No, no, and he like you and uh, you and Mumbles were talking about the cow, and he like doubled down on his southern while he was doing. It. I think he was just climbing you. Oh, that wasn't me. I didn't say anything about a cow. That was Monkey. I can't remember this happening. I I was like messaging broke, but at the time and I'm like hilarious. No, I'm. I originally mentioned about the owl bear. Maybe you're talking about that, cause, cause I said, uh, wait, is this owl bear there? And he said, no, it's not there. I said, okay, because if it was, then uh, I'm. I need to retcon everything Loyork's done up until this point. Okay, so <laughs> that was that was way earlier. Yeah. Um. At like the after that, hour... I didn't. I didn't bring it up again after that. I think like uh, monkey the, brought it up. Yeah, at like the two hour and twenty minute part mark, like. You almost get into a fight with the NPC over whatever the, the creature was. Like you, you were about to throw down with a guy. What? Yeah, you don't recall this? I don't have any recollection of what you're talking about right now. You have to watch Monkey's VOD. It's at the two hour and twenty minute mark. A little bit before that, but roughly around. There. Um, like it was. It was just real short. It was like maybe a minute long. But it was just one of the most amazing, fast-witted back and forth, and both of you were like lay down here in the south, kind of just, just trying to, like trying to out south each other through the entire thing. It was hilarious. I re- I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I said, you got to watch the vod. Um, just like the rest of us. See, here's the problem. I'm trying to compliment you, and you're like, I didn't do that. I'm like, yes, you did. I was there. Not really, but I was there. Kind of. I was actually watching Alex Jones when that happened, but... <laughs> <clears throat> well, that doesn't mean anything, now does it? So let's see. We got um, the two hour twenty minute mark is when the whole thing about the about the fight or the the thieves coming up that was the two hour twenty mark. It was it was like just before that, like two eighteen, two nineteen, something like that. I'm not. I don't remember precisely, but I mean, I know I sent that as a time stamp. Um, broke, but. Or I could have just been hearing things wrong and it wasn't you. But it sounded like you. It sounded like fumbles. It definitely sounded like you were trying to out-south each other. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch that entire section because, uh, like, I didn't go anywhere near it. It was uh, Monkey's character, uh, Vix, and um, uh, um, Marinos that went over to it. Okay. Cause uh me, broke butt, um, Meta and um Dark Moon uh played a card game mm-hmm. just after that. And then that's when the fight thing started happening. Huh. Yeah, I'm not I was probably at that point not paying close enough attention to be able to delineate. But, I mean, it sounded a lot like you and a lot like Mumbles were going forth, back and <laughs> forth at each other. I'll have to go back and rewatch it, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't me. It was also like, you know, 3.30 in the morning. <clears throat> My comprehension is probably a lot lower. 3.30 in the morning? What? Oh, did you watch the VOD? Last night, yeah. I, I, I was watching Alex Jones. Nothing else was, was distracting me. Plus, I had to catch up from last week. And then I watched Friday. <laughs> so what do you think of Lay Work so far? I think he's great. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying him. Um, I'm kind of curious as to where Mumbles is going with the whole festival thing. But 
Um, uh, the festival was just a thing that he wanted to do mm -hmm. um, because he thought it was fun. He keeps talking about how uh, it's never, this has been a tradition in this place for such and such time, and it's never going to happen again because of the war that's coming. He said that several times. Mm. <sighs> but but yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh they so um after the fact I was talking about somebody asked me about the nicknames I'd given everybody. Yeah. And so I told them what all the nicknames were that we had come up with last week. Uh-huh. And they were asking me specific detail. Why did you why is this one named this one? Why is this one named this one? Um and so I was like, well, if I give you too much information, that's that's a little bit of spoilery into you know mm -hmm. into his backstory. So here's the surface level of why I gave these nicknames, um, and most of them were superficial, um, because realistically, there's not a reason, right? Um, but as all good D and Ders, now that I've done it, I have to come up with a reason. Mm -hmm. And so as I was falling asleep last night. I did a deep dive into what Leoric thinks about each of the party members, mm -hmm. which I really need to write down. Um, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Uh, which I could probably go through the process again um, because we haven't had another session. So yeah, but I probably need to, to write that down because uh, I came up with some interesting theories last night, which are not theories. They're canon because I came up with them and it's my character. Right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um but yeah, so I'm I'm excited to So the the there's a main facet with Leoric mm -hmm. yeah. that I'm really excited to uh have people to start to realize and uh for that to come out. It's gonna be a long time before it comes out though, but it's gonna be fun when it does. Is he a huh? Is he a cannibal? He's not a cannibal, no. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I'm just not gonna... you! I'm not saying that any... None of my characters have ever been a witting cannibal. <laughs> a witting cannibal. Raising helps. No. Oh, very yeah. important. Yes, well... Um, he's only part bull, so... Hmm. He's actually not even part bull, he's part minotaur. Oh. Interesting. Yes. His mother was a furbug and his father was a minotaur. That doesn't seem like it's going to end badly at all. <laughs> I have no idea what uh, what um, Mumbles has in store for that. I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve. But, uh, but yeah. And if you've paid attention, his description basically gives that part away like i i told somebody the other day that um if they pay close enough attention every inch of leoric's backstory is in episode one mm -hmm. if you pay a close enough attention you can probably figure out what leoric's all about in episode one i did not paint it <laughs> um but yeah, so although your description gives it away in the first in the second sentence, uh, your attention is drawn to the horns on his head. Yes, those of you that have met a furbog in the past know this is a bit unusual. Exactly. Oh. Mm hmm. Where are they? I I I've learned something though. Have you? A lot of people are very, very enthusiastic about getting their description into the descriptions portion of everything. Nobody reads it. <laughs> what do you mean nobody reads it? I mean, nobody reads it. Like, I didn't read it until right now. And you said it's in there. I'm like, wait a second. Did Bash put anything in the description chat? Oh, yes, he did. There it is. I've read everybody's. No, oh, well, most people don't read them. I... <clears throat> This is the problem with this is actually the, one of the problems with with D and D as a role playing aspect, because everyone is usually much more concerned with 
bringing out their own character's role as opposed to engaging with anybody else's. Yeah, I'm trying to get better at that. Mm -hmm. um, like this, uh, like Friday, I uh, brought, uh, well, I uh, this is the second time that I've actually picked Wallachon up from being uh, can't stand up drunk. Um, first time being in the tavern. Um, and I also brought in um, uh, Wesley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wesley. Um, just try because I uh trying not to uh overpower the people that are naturally quieter. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm trying. Me and Monkey both are trying to make a conscious effort to uh bring those people into the fold. Yeah. I uh, I was having a little bit of issue with that on Tuesday. Not with overpowering people, but with just being overpowered. Um, yeah. So I was like, you know what? He's drunk anyway. He has no idea. He's not even sure that he's. Yeah. Tuesday was a lot. Yeah. Uh, when you get a when you get a good group of type A personalities in there. Not that we're all type A personalities in real life, but in D and D. Uh yeah, well oh, okay. except Ducky. Ducky's a Type A everywhere. <laughs> when when she grabbed your hand, I'm like, this is not going to. End. It's just <laughs> not going to end well. I was like, are you seriously trying to force me into doing something? Are you threatening no, 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 harm no. to someone you just met? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was hoping the shocking grasp would have would have worked. Uh, -huh. uh, cause then that would have been the end of it minus whatever monkey decided to do. Right. Uh, which I knew he would also jump in because our backstories are the same. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, then it didn't work. And I thought I've got to teach her a lesson. I can't just let her think that this is okay. And so I was like, okay, magic missile. That's not going to miss. And it didn't. <laughs> nope. That was crazy though. You Nat 20 twice from the ground. Yes. Yes, it was epic. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, again. It's like, it won't happen a third time. And it didn't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If it had, though, uh, I would have been standing at the end of it, I, get, I bet. We needed somebody to stand up because we were all just, like, on the ground the whole time. The whole time. Yeah, it was a very. Oh, exactly uh, me. I didn't get hit at all. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, but um, it was a very unfavorable circumstance. It was just bad all the way around. So, what is your party role? I mean, okay, I, you've, I'm a wizard. I know you're a wizard, but that's not your party role. That's your class. You play every class pretty much to fill whatever role you need it to be. I can't exceptions. be a healer. Okay, you're not a healer. No, uh, DPS. Okay, you're DPS. Am I the only DPS we've got? Because it's kind yeah. of feeling like I'm the only DPS I'm, we got. I am, I am DPS and AOE. Okay. I, I'm, I'm straight DPS. Eventually I'll get to have like a halfway AOE, unless Mumbles catches on to that before then. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, okay. So, right now, my weapon is broken. It yes. is broken broken um he sent me a list of things that he wants to add to it at some point and i told you a little bit about this before yeah he wants to add extra shots he wants the ability to target more than one enemy integrated shield a bayonet <laughs> and i'm like ah uh, like so that that'll take me pretty well from being you know just simple dps to aoe and dps but like man Mumbles, you got you got to think this through. You cannot give your players something like that because they will use it. <laughs> Ask Masters how that went. By the way, did you like <laughs> the video I sent you earlier? I've seen it before, but like that yeah. was new today. Well, I, yeah, I follow that channel. Oh, okay, yeah, and I've seen the argument there before too. But mm -hmm. yes, I did watch that video. I wasn't even referring to the argument. I was just like, 
I didn't th even know the argument was going to happen. It was like we get to the like the third instance where magic item, you know, trumps the scenario, and I'm like, I got to send this to. Me. <laughs> uh, Immovable yeah. rod in the stomach. Oh yeah, I've seen. I've actually seen that be used several times uh, for that reason. Mm -hmm. Critical Role did it season one. Um, <clears throat> campaign one. It's weird calling it season. Uh, yep, yep, uh huh. Joe did. That is still like one of my favorite D and D moments I've experienced personally, of all because because we're just like the glee in your voice was just like ah, even this even this here, and I'm like okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how we're gonna get out of this. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, I haven't used that at all. Of course, now I'm going. Man, I wish I'd have used that back when we were fighting the elementals in the dungeon. Yeah, that would have worked. Before. I think you did try to use it then, didn't you? And they succeeded. I don't recall. I don't remember either. I faintly remember you using it at least once before, though. I may have used it once, and it unsuccessfully didn't, didn't do all that much. So I'm like, I ask you, and like a couple of weeks later, I'm like, hey, wait a second, this is exactly what I need. Uh, sure was exactly what you needed, jerk. <clears throat> you gave it to me <laughs> unintentionally. It was not by design; it was by indesign. Or oh. undesigned, or not designed. It was the opposite of design. There's so much broken. Cannot wait until, like, and I can hold it off being super broken for, like, 12 levels. Like, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pretend to have it balanced. Up. And then, and then I'm going to break. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, I mean, so, by, by level 12, you should have some pretty broken stuff anyway, in my opinion. So I'm struggling right now with the path to take Leowark on class-wise. Okay. Um, because, as you know, he is a druid barbarian. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at it last night, and I don't know if I'm going to stick to my original plan. And I've, I've decided that I'm going to base base it off of um, character development as we level up. Yep. Um, I have a set plan that will probably alter depending on in-game things. Because um, my original plan was to go uh, two levels uh, druid, one level barbarian. Uh, to start and then go four more levels into barbarian to get me um an extra attack yep. and then to dump the rest of it into druid until at some point i was going to put one more level into barbarian um i didn't know exactly when that was going to happen but um it gives me uh, a fourth rage and um my second um subclass uh thing um but after looking at it for like the hundredth time i don't know that i need um extra i think having either a feat or um upping my ability score higher because uh, it's gonna the the way I have it now. If I do five barbarian and uh, or six barbarian and fourteen druid, mm -hmm. then I am going to be um, short one ability score um, change. Uh, I'm going to be losing that, so I would have to use every opportunity I have to up an ability score to up my ability scores and take no feats. Um, so only going 
I'm right now I'm thinking possibly only two levels into Barbarian, which would give me reckless attack. Huh? Um maybe three, potentially four. Um well no, I have to go I would have to go at least four to get the last um uh to get a, a the opportunity for a feat. I would have to do at least four. Um which w- would be fine because it gives me extra rage. Um, but I, I don't know when I'm going to do that or it's, it's all very, very complicated. So I, I think I'm going to do it based off of his, um, character development. Um, if the time comes when he is going to, cause right now we have a barbarian, right? So his role as the frontline tank is not necessarily needed. Right. Um, and so... You can kind of put I him could, into more of an AOE control. Put type. him more to an AOE uh, uh, battlefield control type scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, which he would also be okay with if he went through some character development. Right. Um, got some rage issues. It's not just rage issues. I'm not gonna go into it because a broke, but um listens, listens, and b because you are a, an attentive viewer. Um, and so I don't want to really give you any spoilers either. Um, but yeah, so there's there's some thinking I'm gonna have to do, which thankfully I have plenty of time to do that. It's not like I have to lay out every single level I'm going to do from uh-huh. here on out. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. So I am basing my Tuesday build off of something else, off of something that I found someplace. I'm making a couple modifications to it, and then I get to make a major modification to it because that ability score increase is one of those things that was factored into the initial build. But because I rolled so incredibly well on my character creation, I don't need it. Like I already have better ability scores than like the fully fleshed out one, which ends up taking um, one of its classes up to level 12 to get that, that ability score increase. Yeah. And I don't have to do that now because I rolled so well. Um yeah. so I'm going to be taking that back. Plus I also get uh an ability score basically I get an ability score increase to piety if I get it up to fifty. Um I just have to put it in either into either uh dex or intelligence. So yeah. do that anyway, because it'll be about the same time as I'm getting to level twenty regardless um so what are you subclassing into uh well so i'm going to be sticking with rogue up until level five and then i'm going to start going ranger ranger Hmm. why ranger because of a couple abilities that you can get as a ranger that you can only get as a ranger going to help make my bow even more broken and then uh, after that, I'm going to start doing other things. Like subclass abilities? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I basically have a, a, a template laid out already for what I'm going to do uh, for another character that I have just kind of filling in my character box. But uh, gonna, it's, it's, it's broke in the, all the best You're ways. Sh- you should um, message uh, Pixel right now and Tell him ask I want him to be your pet. Yeah, see what he says. <clears throat> hey, oh, I do actually. I do have a chat going with him. How about that? Well, it's not like it's hard to make one. I know, but I mean, it's a hassle for me, and I don't like to do it. Which is why I typically don't do things like this until like the last possible minute. Um.
Oh, that okay. That's for a video game. I thought that was like IRL. Never mind. I don't. I saw this really cool piece of tech on Twitter and was like, oh, that would be cool. What is it? Or that looks cool. What is it for video game? Eh, never mind. Interest devolved. <sighs> um, I asked if I could be your bugbearian pet. <laughs> uh, he's going to think you want, wanted to be a barbarian then I said bugbarian yes which is a combination of bugbear and barbarian yes so he's going to think you want to be a barbarian but I do I'm playing Barkham I do want to play barbarian thought you is it barbarian that you play yep oh Okay. He's responding already. I'm shocked. Thought for sure this is gonna take a couple minutes. Oh man. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm I'm looking forward to, to building things up here and long. <clears throat> Moving right along. Been right along. Okay. Yep. Uh, ooh, Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet. I have not seen that yet, and it's on Disney Plus now. Not seen it. I've seen it. Haven't just haven't seen it yet. It's one of those films where it's like, like it's good, but the whole time I'm watching it, I, I maybe it was just when I watched it, I was like, man, I think I should be enjoying this more than I am. <laughs> like, like, it may have just been like my mood at that point but I'm like man I don't really know if I'm enjoying this or not <laughs> like it's great it's good I, I don't know if I should be <laughs> I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to express that that particular um uh feeling kind of unique um Uh. <sighs> so is he basically saying no? No, he just just said yes. Oh, I heard sentient, and that <laughs> says, that didn't bode well. He says, "Yeah, relationship between players is up to you guys. There is a region where more monstrous races are seen as less sentient." Slavery in the region was recently outlawed, but it could be you're not a slave but a servant. I was thinking it was more of a Wookiee life debt type situation. I mean, that works for me. <laughs> I don't need anything else than that. Um, and it does. It, it works out great if he's less sentient. But I don't care as long as he <laughs> as he's long, less sentient. We know this. As long as he has a, <laughs> as long as I can roll him up a six for that, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> Oh, this would be fun. I still have my Barkham art. Great question. Hope I didn't delete it. I mean, not that I actually have art for it, but you know, I do have Barkham art. Wonderful. This would be fun. Yeah, now, if I only he'll uh, drop those docs, then we can actually get started on our backstory. Oh, that's Barkham? That's Barkham. Is that the art you used the first time? Yep. I don't remember that art. Uh, I have this other one, but I don't think I used this. I mean, it also, it also technically works, but... It's the point across. I don't remember that either. I think those are the only two I got here. 
check through. I remember um, not quite ripped, but like big and muscly with like huge, long, lanky arms reaching out forward. That's what I remember. That could have just been me looking up pictures, though. Hmm. Like, I'd be totally fine. I just, I wanted to make sure that he had, like, a long-handled axe. Because he's supposed to be handling, like, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to have a halberd. Yeah. Um. So is halberd something you can pick up at level one? I believe so. Cool. Not that we're going to be level one. Right. I mean, you know. Oh, there's a miniature here. That is kind of ridiculous, but it's blue, so that's probably not going to work. Um, the orc is... All right. Doing that. Didn't mean it. Sorry for things that came through to people's ears. It should have been there. You didn't hear that. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what are you talking about? Masters didn't hear. Oh, I think this was actually my original Bark and Mart. Um, but I didn't download it. I just like copied and pasted it or something. Okay, I, I more remember that one. Yeah. There's a couple Stop. here that are not bad, but it's like they're they're wearing armor, and you can't have armor on your bugbear. He's in here, the monstrous. I'm, I'm, I think this will be, I've, I've been wanting to play Barkham for a long time. And I think this is finally my opportunity. So, you know. Where he won't die immediately because he's starting at a higher level. Starting at what, level seven? Uh, at least level five. He said maybe level. You better figure this no, out. No, he said level seven, maybe level nine. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Level seven, maybe level nine. Yeah, a level seven Barkham is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, because because by then you can pick up uh, Polar Master mm -hmm. already, and if level nine, then you can pick up Polar Master and Sentinel. Yep, and then he is untouchable. Screw everyone. Ah, <laughs> uh, so so happy. Um, <laughs> it looks so like since I'm not you're doing that I think because I, I was originally going to go um, with the let me get the right word before I just spout out nonsense um, I was originally going to go with the guardian armor uh -huh. um, but it's because that's more of the tanky thing. Yeah. But I think since you're doing that, um, I'll probably go infiltrator instead, which is more ranged. Okay. With lightning blasters. And you're an artificer. Yes. And it also increases my feet by five, which is good because then I'll have 30 feet of movement instead of 25. Cause well, I get, think I'm going to go mountain dwarf. You won't get left entirely behind by me. I'm going to be moving. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> a whole lot. You're going to be booking it. That's the whole plan. <laughs> um. Oh, let's see here. Yes, sir. Uh, Got anything else? Ah, uh, do I have anything else? Um. Oh, did you listen to that song that I sent you? Yes. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Um. There's a couple notes where I think she could have done something different. It would have been more inter more interesting, but it would have also been more vocally challenging. So I don't know what her range is, but it wasn't bad. I mean, good. I enjoyed it. I didn't think I would. And then she started singing. I was like, oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. 
there, there's there's some good stuff out there i think i think Ginny d is doing a good job that's one thing that i actually need to talk with mumbles about and not really you because you're not the dm anymore not your discord either um nope. uh we gotta get a an ebony chat not ebony what is it evermore there we go ebony is a okay game. Okay, I was like, oh, wait, what? Yeah. Ebony is a game that I played a long time ago, way too much, and thank God I don't play it anymore. Um, but, oh. yeah. Evermore. There we go. We gotta get an Evermore chat going. We, gotta, we, gotta, we should see if anyone else wants to come with us, because right now we're only at, like, nine people. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen, bro. What, more people come? Uh, us going at all. Why do at you least not, think... not at the original time we were planning on it. Why is that? Because COVID-19 is still here. You know, that'll be 100 days in. We're supposed to be like locked down and masked up and not able to go anywhere and locked in our houses and full police jurisdiction and everything for 100 days. And then we should be fine, right? That's how, that's how it's being advertised to us. I'm not getting into politics. <clears throat> I wasn't even going to respond. Yeah. Um... Like, by then, we should just be able to go out and do whatever we want. Um, anyway. No politics. Calm down. Not Twitter. This is not Twitter. That is, that is the one thing we do not talk about on this channel. <laughs> I, I am merely expressing my vote of confidence for the expressed game plan of our incoming president. Potentially. And uh, that will be wonderful. Um, I was also, almost... I'll get my student loans paid off, and I don't have to pay them. Way! If that how I highly doubt that's going to happen, but if that happens, He's, I'm... He said I'm that's okay week one. Uh, he, he said a lot of things. I know he said a lot of things. No, no politics! <laughs> We're just... <laughs> I'm just expressing my enthusiasm for certain policies which have been expressed by the incoming president. I'm just happy that you're you're starting to call in the incoming president. <laughs> Even though you said potentially last time. There may be a reason for that. Um <sighs> anyway. No politics. <laughs> We're not doing be, pretty good. This might be a good time to end the podcast. <laughs> yep, that might be, because you're not gonna let off of it now. Oh, I got problems. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Kuya Carol's Monday. Really? Kuya Carol's Monday. Really? It's happening. Foxy, if you say so. Foxy, I'm... Hey. I don't know if Kuya said it or not. Foxy said it. He blew up my chat for a long time. Um, Kuya Caroling will be this Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, first stream in a long time. Don't miss it. I'm definitely going to miss it. Don't blame you. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be uh, me and Kuya and Foxy and maybe Brokebutt. Why Foxy and why Brokebutt? Foxy because Foxy. Brokebutt because it was mentioned to her when it didn't think that Kuya was going to be doing things. And I'm like, I still want to do caroling. And she's like, well, can I do that with you? And I'm like, Sure. And so, um, yeah, possibly broke butt. Most likely broke butt. Most entirely sure broke butt. Like, broke butt is probably more on board than Kuya. By a lot. <laughs> I reached out nothing, to Kuya like two weeks ago. The, nothing and, makes sense in the world. Anymore. I reached out to Kuya like two weeks ago, and he's like, if you want. And I'm like, well, I didn't say if I want. I asked if you want. And he's like, Okay. This is like I, I after like several hours of this, I'm finally like, Kuya. I'm looking for an either enthusiastic affirmative, or I'm going to take everything as a negative, and I'll figure something else out. And he's like, "Awesome, let's do it." And I'm like, "Okie doke." <laughs> Sometimes it's just not worth the effort. <clears throat> and Most if, times. And if ever there was something that was not worth the effort, 
Do your chores. <laughs> I mean. Well, at least this time you have a new plan for how to do the audio. Uh, yep, I still got to get that work. Uh, do you remember what that plan is? Because I don't. I have two plans. Both of them are better. One of them is more likely to work out better. Um, we'll see how it goes. That's all I got. All right. Well, you'll have something to report on next week then. Mm -hmm. Probably no vods of that because nobody wants to hear that again. Nope. Wow. I got to figure, I got to figure out if I am still capable of streaming to anything. I have a Twitch channel. I think I streamed to it once. Maybe. You did. I you did, did um, uh, the bears thing. Bears thing. Oh, I did do the bears thing. Forgot about that. Oh yeah, I, I'm totally set up to stream to Twitch. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't because that's when you and Brokebutt started talking. What to who to what? You and Brokebutt started talking just before the bears thing. What does that have? To, you. But I was saying like you don't what. I don't what. I said. That I am set up for streaming. Uh-huh. And then you said, I don't, because that's when you and Brokebutt first started talking. Trying to figure out what the what it was that you don't. I don't remember what you said before that, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I have to go back and watch... Man, do I have to go back and watch my own podcast? Darn it. Darn it, Master. It's supposed to be better than this. Um, it made sense in my head, so it must have made sense out loud, too. That doesn't always work out. Quite rare, in fact. Uh, but yeah, Kuya Curls is happening. Um, there will be no links to that. You guys got to figure it out on your own. I'm sure if you're industrious enough to find this podcast, you're industrious enough to follow the link to the Discord and figure it out from there. I may remember to post it there. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. well, for the sake of everyone involved, I hope you don't. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I don't think Brokebutt knows what she's gotten herself into. I know for a fact she doesn't know what she's gotten herself into. Because um, you haven't told her. I did tell her. but Oh, you did tell her and she doesn't believe you? Uh, well, she does. But there is a limit to the amount Imagination. of information which can be communicated with words as it applies to who you singing. No. Um, tell her that Jermaine sing sings better. It doesn't make any sense to you, but it will make sense to her. Well, now I don't have to. Well, maybe. I don't have maybe to. Maybe it'll tell make her. sense to her. Because she's going to watch the podcast. Listen to the well, podcast. That's, that's true. Well, if she listens to it before Christmas Caroling on Monday. Also, she could just mute Kuya. <laughs> that is a good plan. I like that plan. I mean, as the guy. Thinking about this now, maybe does I she know that Jermaine can't sing though? That's yeah. a um, broke butt. Hit me up. Do you know that Jermaine can't sing? Um, actually, she's probably several weeks behind on this because she and Ducky are just now catching. Yes, up. Mandalorian. Yes, I know. Messaging apparently you at the same time. Um, well, not messaging me, but uh, telling me not to give her any spoilers. Oh well. Been... Anytime I bring Star Wars up, she's like, "Is this Mandalorian stuff?" Yeah, Ducky and she are met and they see get a name drop. They're currently up to episode six. Yeah. Um Ducky used to do that to me. I stopped responding, so she stopped sending it to me. I mean I haven't responded to her either, but you know, <laughs> they're still doing it. Um and it's, and it's not like it's not like there's anything to respond to respond to, it's just a non sequitur. Boba yeah. Fett, Ahsoka, Grogu. I know. I'm caught up. What's your problem? <laughs> um, trouble for this. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. Let's... How can you get in trouble when you're not in a relationship? Because I am being more or less derogatory to people who have means of finding out about that. This whole internet thing. These are really open to reprisal. By a lot. Just in general. 
I, like I, I try to be careful about what I say about people, because they'll they'll find me eventually. <laughs> Shoot me in the foot. Um, some of them can do that. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think I think I think we're we're about wrapped up here. Anything else you want to add in, Masters? No, nope, can't think of anything. Alrighty. Um, Nothing that you that would be interesting to you, anyway. And drop your your cookie recipe. They're not. No, you're not your candy recipes. No. Okay. Family secret. Figured. Um, it's worth asking. Um, alrighty then. We didn't talk a lot this week. We didn't. Well. Yeah, well, you know, this was kind of a weird week. Um, my my, my weeks were going to become a lot more like, normal. In short like I sent time. you that I, I I sent you on Tuesday that I liked your name, mm -hmm. your character. Yep. Then I sent you the video. Then you sent me that video, and that was today. And then we've had a few back and forth, like two. And, yeah. Yeah. And it was all about you know this podcast yeah. because I'm about to pass out. I'm exhausted. So. This is this is good. I mean, we'll, my life is about to normalize, hopefully, by the end of next week. Hopefully, if not. It'll probably still be weird. Um, Do you want to explain that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, then fair enough. At least not right now. Anyway, um, with that being said, thank you all for watching. We do appreciate your kind attentiveness. Uh, if you have a mind to hear more of this, do feel, do feel free to like and subscribe or whatever else it is. Follow whatever is necessary, whatever platform you're listening on to uh, this podcast. Please do share this with your friends, family, and or uh, ardent enemies um, because that's how we grow, particularly the enemies one. Um, we tend to find the people who have a high level of just malevolence enjoy this more than those who are normal people. I may be a leading cause of that. Uh, with that being said, we appreciate your all kind attentiveness. We look forward to... Uh, wait, I did remember one thing we didn't do, Sam, uh, Masters. Uh-huh. Sass, we love you. Oh, we didn't mention Sass once? Not once. How did we do that? I don't know. We, didn't we always need, talk about Sass. We didn't need a fact check. And, he even uh, sent me a message uh, earlier today saying he's going to be working this weekend. Um. And the weekend after next, and they may not be able to in, uh, take part into the interactive section, which he did not. Maybe that's why we didn't think of him. Quite likely, because uh, we uh, I, I was I was actually I actually did think of him because I was sitting here waiting for his responses, mm -hmm. but I didn't read his message that he sent me saying that he probably wouldn't be able to. So there's that. <laughs> Love you, Sass. We miss you. Come back. Come back. You can blame Gabby. I mean, everyone does that. That's so, true. Kind of. I mean, it's just what's it's just what's done. Also, we were very light on the uh, the interactive chat this week, anyways. Not as late as we were last week. Last week we had like three things. No, we had more than three. One, two, three. Let me count. Make sure these are just hours. Yeah, four, five, six, and one of them was post. Right. This week we had one, two, three. Okay, we had more than last week. You fair point. Quite a bit here. I mean, this was like a more normal week. Last week was I don't know what last week was. Last week was fun though. I don't know. Last week was was a great podcast. I like that one. I like doing it. I didn't listen to it. <laughs> but I like doing it. Anyway. Try this again. Thank you all for watching. Oh, last week you talked a lot about Star Wars. That's why you liked it so much. That's why. You knew there was a reason. Yeah, I tuned out a lot. Um, I remember that now. I had a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to episode eight and even more to season three because there's so much set up for season three. So much. And a lot of uh, set up for uh, spinoffs as well. Mm-hmm. 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 So with that, we thank you all again for watching. It has been a great time as always. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again in future episodes. Thank you all, and goodbye. Bye.